In our previous video, we successfully assembled the 882SAOJP serial board. In this video, we'll be focusing on configuring the board, integrating it into the Altair 8800, and connecting the computer to a terminal, setting it up for both input and output functionalities. Before we start with configuring the board, we will remove the basic EEPROM that we installed in the previous video. It will be reinstalled later, but for now we're going to replace it with the AMON EEPROM, which will give us some functionality with memory management. With the EEPROM installed, let's install the jumpers. Since we have the AMON EEPROM installed, we will jumper J1, pins 4 and 5, and pins 2 and 6. This board will be installed in an Altair 8800, which is using the 8080 CPU, so we will jumper J10 to signify that. Finally, we'll configure jumper J16 to activate the onboard reset function. This will ensure that a computer automatically resets to the jump start address each time it's powered on. All remaining jumpers will be left in their current positions. Now that our jumpers are all set, it's time to configure the switches. It's important to know that, with the exception of the baud rate switches, these switches are designed so that a closed switch represents a 0 and an open switch represents a 1. This one characteristic of the serial board can be somewhat confusing, uh, so keep this in mind when configuring the switches. For the first switch, uh, which sets the jump start address, uh, we'll configure it for Amon by setting it to 000, followed by 5 ones. Importantly, ensure that the 9th position is set to 0 or closed, as this is necessary to enable the jump start function. Switch 2, uh, designated for synth switches, will be left entirely as is in the open position. Moving to switch 3, which controls the serial port address, we'll configure it to 001-000, with switches SD and PH being closed. This setup allows us to address port 1 with 10 uh, hex and port 2 with 12 hex. Switch 4 is the EEPROM address. Uh, for Amon, we will set this to 1111111, six ones, and then uh, 00. zero and leave ED open. The final two switches are for setting the baud rate for the two ports. We will set both ports to 9600 baud. Only one switch should be closed for each port. We won't be utilizing the additional features on this board, like the turnkey option, so we'll ignore those and keep them disabled. Having configured the board, let's proceed to install it into the Altair computer and put it to the test. We'll route the two ports from the board uh, through the computer's rear ports, which are compatible with the DB25 connectors. I'll use this specific cable here, connecting one end to the serial board, and the other end will be connected to a serial console or terminal. Additionally, for testing purposes, an adapter will be used to convert the DB25 to an RS-232 connector. This uh, RS-232 connector will then be connected to my test computer using a USB cable. With the cable now attached to the serial board, let's proceed to connect its other end to the test computer. The test computer will be running a serial console, enabling us to interact with the Altair through this setup. After powering up the Altair and executing the program on the installed EEPROM, I encountered an issue. The serial console was flooded with nonsensical uh, continuous data output. This suggests a possible malfunction with the in instruction. To investigate further, uh, we'll input a simple program into the Altair, uh, specifically to observe the behavior of the in instruction when executed. This basic program here that I've typed up initiates the in instruction for port 1 and then loops back to address 0 to repeat it. We'll now input this program into the Altair. 
will proceed with single stepping through the program to closely observe its behavior. Interestingly, the in instruction displays all ones, even in the absence of incoming data on the port, which is quite unusual. Furthermore, the WO light ought to be illuminated, indicating a read operation rather than a write. To diagnose this anomaly, I'll use my voltmeter and do some poking around to see what's happening with the board. Upon further investigation, I've discovered that the uh, S100NN signal is uh, unexpectedly low when it should be high. This indicates that one of the inputs on the U23C uh, is likely incorrect. And J start N, which normally shouldn't be low, seems fine, uh, suggesting the issue lies with another input. Interestingly, the SWON signal also registers as low uh, during the in instruction. Consulting the 882SAOJP data path sheet, SWON's uh, source can be traced either to pin 97 on the S100 bus or to gate U31F. Uh, given that pin 15 of U31F is high, indicating it's inactive, the SWON signal is most likely emanating from the S100 bus. Let's probe around and see what's happening with this pin. While the computer is running and paused on the in instruction, the SWO pin, which is pin 97 on the S100 bus, is expected to be high. This is because the signal is active low, meaning it's active in a low state and inactive in a high state. Ideally, we wouldn't want this signal to be active during the in instruction, as it's a read and not a write instruction. However, as observed on the voltmeter, the signal is registering as low, indicating a discrepancy in the expected behavior. This suggests that pin 97 is receiving an invalid signal from either one of the boards on the bus or the backplane itself. After extensive troubleshooting uh, that involved delving deep into the system, debugging, removing various boards and testing for potential shorts, I think we might have pinpointed the root cause of the issue. In the process of tracing the SWO signal through the CPU board, I encountered an unusual finding. One of the ICs had a bent pin 16, which is the VCC pin. Apparently this was an oversight during the assembly of the board. Having now straightened the bin pin, let's uh, reinstall the IC in the CPU board and then place the board back into the computer to see if this rectifies the issue. With the power on again, uh, it becomes immediately apparent that the jump start circuit is operational and the WO light is on, which is a great sign. To ensure everything is set correctly, let's uh, perform a full reset uh, to reinitialize the system to the start address. Then we'll execute the program loader on the EEPROM. Keep an eye on the console as I execute the program. Great! It looks like the EEPROM has successfully transmitted data over the serial connection, which is excellent. From the console output, we can see that the software being executed is Amon version 3 authored by Martin Eberhard. On a related note, I'd like to extend my gratitude to Martin for his invaluable uh, assistance in debugging the serial board issues. His insights were incredibly helpful. Alright, let's see what happens when we type in a question mark. It seems to bring up the help menu uh, detailing how to utilize each instruction supported by the Amon EEPROM. This confirms that the serial board is functioning as expected. Now that we are satisfied with the functionality of the serial board, let's hook up the Altair to a real terminal. A 
here I've got a Y65 terminal. A uh, great find I picked up from Facebook Marketplace at a bargain. This terminal comes equipped with a keyboard, although it's missing a key, uh, the keyboard is still functional. It connects to the terminal at the back via an RJ9 connector, if I recall correctly. Once the keyboard is connected, we can also attach the serial cable to one of the communication ports. I'll be plugging the serial cable into the COM2 port and uh, we'll set up the terminal to use this port in its configuration settings. Let's power up the machine and uh, execute the program from the jumpstart address. It displays the same message as we saw in the serial console. Now let's input uh, a question mark to access the help menu once more. Observe how the Altair relays keystrokes back to the terminal, just as it's supposed to do. I'm going to execute a command to dump memory across a range of addresses. We'll type in a DU and then the start address, 00 hex, and an end, end address, uh, FF hex. Great! Everything appears to be functioning correctly. Recall that we initially removed the MITS extender ROM basic EEPROM from the serial board to install the AMON EEPROM. I just reinstalled the basic EEPROM back into the socket to see if we can run basic on the Altair. Powering up the system and initiating the program, we're immediately prompted with a query asking for the memory size. Well, we could simply press enter to select the default setting. I'll specify the actual memory size we have installed in the computer, which is 4096 bytes. As for the line printer option, its function isn't entirely clear to me, so we'll just type in an O and press enter. 344 bytes free and we're greeted with the OK text, which is basically a basic telling us that it's ready for us. Let's attempt to write a uh, basic program, uh, one that is typically used as a first program in many programming languages. That is all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a like and subscribe for more content like this. We have a lot of exciting material lined up for you and we'd love for you to stay tuned. See you in the next video.